Good morning, America. Good morning, good morning, good morning to all over America, all over the world. We have people from all over the world, not just the good U.S. of A. Good morning, Harris in the Philippines. Are you hearing me today? I pray that uh, you are hopping on with me and that we can be blessed together in the Lord. Today is Friday. It's a big day. Friday is always a big day. Yesterday we had a lot of people on vacation mode or something like that because we were down about 10 from the day before. But I figure the crowd was perfect, the ones we did have on, and that was wonderful. If you have your Bibles today, we're going to take a look at Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, we're going to go 12 to 30. Philippians 2, 12 to 30, reading in Jesus' name. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault, in a uh, warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky, as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then you will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. I hope in the Lord Jesus Christ to send Timothy to you soon that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else, no one else like him who will show you genuine concern for your welfare. For everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ, but their own. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. I am confident in the Lord that I myself will soon come, will soon, will come soon. But I think it is is necessary to send back to you Euphrates, my brother, co-worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you and is in distress because you heard he is ill. Indeed he is ill and almost died, but God had mercy on him. And not only him, but also on me, to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad that I may have less anxiety. So then, welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor, uh, with great joy and honor people like him, because he almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life to make up for the help you yourselves could not give me. This is the gospel reading. Hold on one second. I need my coffee. I'm waiting for it here. Okay, anyway, here we go. So let's talk about Philippians. The question is, 
How in practice can you make a difference in the lives of those around you? Paige Buckeye, are you on today? Jim and Paige. I haven't hardly seen anybody jumping. I got nobody saying hi yet. I got 17 people that are all hiding in the weed. Oh, okay. I'm going to tell a little story about Paige Buckeye. And she's not even listening. She may get on and listen some other time today. People that make a difference. In it. Yesterday was Paige's birthday. And uh, if you have met Paige uh, one time and she got your address, you have received cards from Paige. One time I said to Paige, Paige, why do you, why do you send um, cards to people all the time? What, what are you doing? Like, you're, you're zealous for this. And she told a story about how when she was a little girl, a real little girl one time, uh, her birthday was kind of passed over. People did not send. She went to the mailbox. People did not send her any cards. And it broke her heart. And she said after she came to the Lord, she said, you know, that was one thing that I dealt with with the Lord and I felt like the Lord was giving me a, a ministry of blessing people, sending them cards for their anniversary, for their birthdays, sending them cards for get well. She said, I don't, I, there's a lot of things I can't do, but one thing I can do, I can send a card because I know how important it was for me. And I think of that story today when I read this Philippians 2, 12 to 30 passage, Paul was sending his Timothy, his precious Timothy. And he was doing it because he saw the value in the children of God. And any time you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ in the way that Paige came to know Jesus, you develop such a love for God's people and a hunger that you just, you want them to know Jesus. And um, you're called to be like um, your Father in Heaven who loves to bless. Your Father in Heaven loves to bless. You're called to bless people. That's just the way it is. If we love God, we are called to bless people. We're called to help people. We're called to, to allow people to, to see the blessings of God because God is, I'm trying to get my light here, you guys. I'm having a little issue today with my light. I don't know why. I'm just trying to get that. To, it's so dark in my room here. There we go. That's better. These goofy cameras nowadays. So, we're, we are children of God called to bless those around us. And you have a responsibility to work out your own salvation, to see God's grace impact every area of your life. But it is He who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill the good purposes of God, it says in verse 13. And so you rest and rely on God and His work on your behalf. Many people are reluctant to trust God with their future because they're fe they fear that God will make them do something that, that they have no desire to do or, or will make a mess of their life. Of course, both of these fears are without foundation and truth. No, when you step into the fears and you do the very things that God's put on your heart to do, you find blessings. Now, I'm not saying monetary blessings, you're going to get rich. I'm saying you find blessings from God. There are things in your spirit that, that start to become fulfilled. For example, dear Sister Paige, having to live 
all those years with a broken heart. But when she recognized the love of the Father in heaven and how much he loved her, she, she knew that it was going to be an opportunity to make wrongs right, to set the course of her own spirit into a direction that's going to be an old brokenness that, that's nagging on her. She can turn it around in Christ and use it to glorify God. And that's exactly what she did. That old memory of not having one birthday card. She was a little girl. Instead of being bitter and hurtful and angry, she said, no. No, I'm going to take this and I'm going to, I'm going to pour out Christ on every human being I can with a card. It's ingenious. It's absolutely ingenious. Only from God could God do something like that. And praise be to God, I get to, as a pastor, sit and watch him work through a pressure. Now, there are a lot of stories of God doing things like that. There are things where God is calling you to surrender old hurts and old pains to Him. Because God wants to give you the desire to do whatever He has been calling you to do. And he, he's, he's putting that into you, that desire, so that you can experience freedom from the bondage of life. He's calling you to minister to those around you that are, are poorer than you. That is where your heart will be. It'll be with the poor. It'll be with the downtrodden. It'll be with the people that are needy. If he is calling you to teach, he'll give you a desire to teach. If you surrender to his will, he will bring about a good purpose. But it's, it's a daily surrender. It's a daily calling out on God. You see, what he wants for your life is good. It's not necessarily easy. It's not easy. But my friends, you will not be able to improve on God's plan for you. So whatever he's allowed you to step into, just step into it. He will also give you the, the energy you need. That energy is God's energy, an energy deep within you. God himself willing and, and, and working at what will give him the most pleasure. Paul knows the joy of being blessed. He writes, do everything readily and cheerfully. No bickering, no second guessing. Just dive into blessing others who you know God's called you to bless. Go out into the world with an uncorruption of the attitude and mind, knowing that you have been brought by God through Christ to bless. And if you have complete confidence that that is what God's called you in the way that God's called you to do it, maybe it's sending a card. Maybe it's something else. There are thousands of ways that you can go help a person, bless a person. But God calls you to go out. A breath of fresh air in this polluted society is what this society needs right now. And I believe the Holy Spirit can work through you to be that, that breath of fresh air in a dark and dying society. Provide people with a glimpse of good living and of the living God who dwells and lives in you. Carry the light, giving message into the night. You have the, uh, you have the immense privilege, my brothers and sisters, of being able to give people 
not just money, but the word of life, it says in verse 16a. And so give them the word of life. There is no greater joy than seeing people who are spiritually dead come to life in Jesus Christ. It is the absolute greatest joy in the whole universe. And Paul is willing to give his life with joy for this privilege. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering, Paul says, on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and I receive with I receive it with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice, he says in verse 17 and 18. Now, I move something. I know I've got people here saying good morning. Why can't I see it? I think I slid it off. And now I don't know where those things are. I apologize. I bet there's a lot of you saying good morning, good morning. I can't see your thing popping up right now. But um, good morning. Good morning to all of you. I think when I first got going, I slid a little thing off and now I'm, I'm, I'm missing you. I'm not, I'm not interacting with you because I can't see it and I don't know how to pull it back up. So, oh well. So I want to give you a few tips as we wrap up today. First of all, I want you to learn from this. How is it that you can be um, a, a person who can make a difference in the lives of those around you as Paul are doing as Paul is, is, is kind of calling us to be here in this Philippians 2, 12 through 30. First of all, uh, take a genuine interest in others. Timothy is one of Paul's closest friends and is often mentioned in his letter. His loyalty and help were so great that Paul describes it as being like a son with a father in verse 22. Do you know, I got, I got people, I got a guy in... Um, in, in, well, he's in jail. But when I first started ministering to him, he wasn't in jail, but he was probably heading there. That's why I got to meet him and minister to him. But I'll never forget this young man told me that um, he never had much of a father. And he asked me if, he said, could I have permission to call you Pops? I was like, well, if it helps bring him to Jesus, yes, of course, call me Pops. I don't care. Call me whatever you want if, you, if you're going to surrender your life to Christ. Amen. This man has been growing wonderfully in his faith. And the bottom line is, we become like a father or a mother to people that we reach out and love to and mentor Paul pays tribute to his friend. He says that this friend is loyal and genuine. Paul was concerned for him. Paul compares this friend to the bright, beautiful picture of of of, of like a, a, a beam of light or a breath of fresh air. And he also does does the compare and contrast. He contrasts it to the self-interest, saying the people around here are looking out for themselves. Well, nothing's changed. We know that people in America are still looking out for themselves. People all over the world looking out for themselves. It's not common, it's not normal for people to go out and just look out for the needs of others. But Timothy was a blessing because he watched Paul. And Paul was a blessing because Paul's eye was on Christ. And because he took a genuine interest in the welfare of God's children, verse 20, Timothy's interest was totally authentic, it was real, and it was meaningful. Because he cared, he loved them. Paul says that he served with me in the work of the gospel, verse 22. Secondly, show courage on behalf of others. Stick up for others. 
Remember Paul talked about uh, Euphrates, 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 Euphrates? Euphrates was also a loyal friend to both Paul and the Philippians. His true character comes across in both the big and the little things and often is in the little things that most people can pick up where you're at. Having become seriously ill, uh, Euphrates was was um, f considered probably one that was going to die soon. Almost to the point of death, Euphrates is troubled, not because of his ill, um, close to death experience, but because he might not be able to go out and bless others and help others. He just wanted to keep serving. He was like those who, when ill, are not so much worried about the illness as by the fact that they might be a burden onto their friends and family. He didn't want to burden them, people. Paul described uh, Euphrates as a, as a brother, a fellow worker, a, a fellow soldier in verse 25. Euphrates had, uh, had been prepared to risk his life for the sake of his friend Paul in verse 30. And this expression is actually more literally translated as gambling his life. He was willing to give his life away. That's what true believers do. They just start living a life in Christ because the old man or the old woman that you used to lug around has died. And so it's easy to give it away. In the early church, there were societies of men and women who called themselves the gamblers, who ministered to the sick and to those in prison. They showed remarkable courage during the plagues, which began in about 250 AD, <coughs> where everyone else had fled from the sick and the dead. But the 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 uh, uh, Syrian or the the Cyprian uh, Christians, they stayed there and they buried the dead. They nursed the sick and they saved the city, at the risk of their own lives. After uh, Euphrates gambled his life by associating himself with Paul who was in prison on a capital charge, thereby risking the same charge as Paul. Euphrates showed reckless, reckless courage on behalf of Paul because he wanted to do the very thing that Paul was doing for him, blessing others. As Paul had received, or as Euphrates had received blessings from Paul, so he knew that it was his gift, it was his call, to use whatever he can, whatever means that he has, to go out into this world and to bless, 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 bless. Even if you got to think back 50, 60 years ago to a time when you were a little girl, looking in the mailbox, seeing not one envelope, no birthday card for you, and that pain living in you all day, all month, all year, year after year, even after you get married, thinking back to those pains from 20, 30, 40 years ago, and then Jesus makes himself alive, makes himself real, declares he loves you, he forgives you, he washes you, that you are new in him, and you decide to take the very thing, one of the very darkest pits of pain in your, in your heart and you say, no more trauma, no more bondage. I'm going to take this very thing that's got me locked down and I'm going to use it to, to set people free. You have a pain in your heart. You have a sorrow and a disappointment that didn't happen for you in life. You believe that Jesus is your Lord, but you still feel like you're under the heavy weight. Well, I would encourage you, like Paul encouraged Timothy and, and uh, I, F. Your, F. Euphrates here, just go bless people. 
Go find people that 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 need a blessing and how you bless them is you use the very thing that the devil thought he had you on the very thing the devil thought that he had beat you down on and take it and flip the pancake and use it to 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 just bless the world that's the way you do it just bless them shower them because you have been showered with that love God's going to use you to love the world in a way that the world doesn't expect. But God is using you. And He will continue to do it in mighty and great ways. Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray over your church. I pray over every person that's on this thread today listening. Father God, bless them. Help them, oh God. Help them to be children of the Most High. Help help them to be living in the joy of their salvation. Thank you, Jesus, that, uh, that I've had this wonderful privilege to bring God's Word once again to your people, to your, to your precious um, church. And Father God, I pray that as, as we are continuing forward in the hope and love of God, Father God, I pray that you would just bless bless each one today as they look for some way, somehow, they could bless someone else. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Give me an amen. Hit share, hit like. Oh, looky here. I finally am in on it. Brian Tracy. Uh, Brian Lacey, excuse me. Brian Lacey. Tracy Tustison. How are you, Brian? Uh, Darren Lund. Hello, 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 Sherry Sievertson. Oh, yes, good to have you. Rena, good to have you. Lulu, Sister Lulu, Jean and Shirley Wolf. Good to have you, Sister Dawn. Pamela, amen and amen. Bless your friends. Orville, good to have you, Brother Orville Sievertson. How are you today, brother? It is good to have you guys. Glad I finally got on and could see the who's here. I was going nuts on that one. It is good to have everyone on. God loves you so much. What a gift we have to go bless this, this, this world that almost feels as if there's no more blessings to be had. But God has a, he has a shocking surprise waiting for a lost and dying world because he's sending you and you're going to bless people. Hey, this is Pastor Sean Bowman, Jamestown, North Dakota, Victory Lutheran. I'm so glad that you joined me today. Join me again next week. I'll be with you. Conan's with you on Monday morning. I'll be with you on Tuesday through Friday, bringing God's word, heralding the gospel, declaring it for you so that you can declare it for others because we are God's electronic church. We're moving ahead, believing believing that he could come back tonight. And we don't want anybody to miss his glorious return and to live in eternity with him. So let's get out there. Let's bless someone in Jesus' name. Let's send the blessings just like Paul was willing to send Euphrates and Timothy We send blessings of any kind and every kind because we love Jesus who lives and dwells in our hearts. God bless you guys. If this blesses you, hit share, hit like, and we will see you next week. Have a great weekend. God bless.